Before we get started with the graphical work for today, I want to take a quick look at some design work I was doing. Specifically, I wanted to come up with the names of the ships that the player could pl play as, and also figure out what their stats were going to be like, like specifically which mechanics they were going to use, since that's basically the only difference between them. So I decided to use names from Greek mythology. So the names I came up with here were Hermes, Asteria, Demeter, Prometheus, Nemosyne, Rhea, Hyperion, and Zeus. And I also made to, sure to make little notes, just about very brief notes about what these names could potentially be related to. Now, with that in mind, I was able to start putting together a table of what their different mechanics are going to be. Now, the interesting thing about doing this particular part of a design is that this is actually kind of like a puzzle game, in a sense. Because right now, what I have to do is I have to make sure that these different mechanics all balance out properly so that every one of these ships has a different layout of the mechanics. None of them can be the identical, otherwise something is going to be missed in terms of potential combinations. But at the same time, they have to kind of make sense to how I feel they would work for the different names of these ships. So it is kind of a puzzle in that sense. Because, every, like for example, for every four... Basically, every ship, there's going to be one weapon type out of the two different pairs, one shield type and one power-ups type. And I ha there has to be a unique combination for each of them. So if I'm going along and putting these together and I suddenly end up with, a com with the same combination twice, well, I've done it wrong then. So the way, I, the way I go about filling this grid here is putting in the specifics that I feel absolutely work best for that, for that particular ship. And again, this is this is pretty subjective stuff here. Like, I mean, you could probably do this however you wanted to, and you're definitely going to have your own ideas of how this would work out best. So I'm just basically going by how I feel it would work. But you could you could totally do this how any other way if you felt it worked better. But the important thing is that I left blanks for wherever I felt it could go either way, and then I would fill in those blanks whenever it seemed like there was only one combination that was now going to work at this point. So with that in mind, I was I was expecting there to be copies as I was going along, but as luck would have it, it actually worked out perfectly on the first go, so I didn't have to make any corrections. I ended up with unique combinations for all eight ships on the first try. So that was kind of lucky, but I'm glad it worked out that way. So now that I knew what the player ships were going to look like, the next thing to do was to actually... Well, I didn't know what they would look like. Now that I knew what their stats were going to be like, the next step was to actually draw them up in Deluxe Paint. Now, the, this pixel art process, like, I mean, we're looking at something here where you can't really get too much detail in. These are basically 15 by 15 pixel ships at this resolution. So I just wanted to sort of give myself a rough guide as to what these ships were going to look like. They aren't, I knew in my mind as I was doing this that they weren't going to look like this. But I needed to give myself a starting point so that I'd be able to figure out what names would be assigned to which ships. And just to give myself a guide as to when I'm doing the high-res artwork. So it actually didn't take that long to put all these ships together. My actual total recording time for doing this was about 20 minutes. So doing the pixel art was, was pretty simple. It's... As I said before, you just do it until it looks good. Like, that's digitized art in a nutshell. Do it until it looks good. So, that's the approach I was going with. I'd do some stuff, I'd look at it. If it looked good, I'd keep it. If it didn't look good, I'd just rework it a bit. And again, I was keeping in mind that it wasn't necessarily going to look like this as a finished artwork. Once I had these basic pixelized versions of the ships, the next thing I wanted to do was assign the names to them before I actually did the final designs. That way I'd have an idea of what I was working towards. So what I did was I took a cut and paste of the different names right out of my word processor, went into Paint Shop Pro, made an enlarged version, a four times enlarged, so that it would match the 1080p version of the sprites in, certain, in terms of the size when they're on screen. And then I just cut and paste all the different names into the thing and just started organizing them. Initially, these were the designs I settled on, but I ultimately decided to swap Rhea and Demeter around. So this is what I actually ultimately ended up with. And then what I did from here was I actually took cut and paste 
from my Paint Shop Pro program here and brought it all into Inkscape. Now, Inkscape is a program used specifically for vector artwork. In fact, it's a free program, so you can download it right now if you really wanted to. But what I was basically wanted to do was use the, these, this pixel artwork as a basis for how I was going to do the final artwork. Because I obviously did not want <laughs> my ships to look pixelized when I'm going for a high-def approach here. And the other thing, too, is I wanted them to be expandable. In fact, doing vector artwork like this is pretty much the way to go for the most part. Unless you're doing stuff that's really, really specific. Me, personally, I'm not really good at the sort of natural flowing art. So that's part of the reason why you end up using Inkscape a lot for things. Now, one of the other things I should point out as we're looking at my initial design work here in Inkscape is that whenever you're going from low res to high res, you can't make it perfect. The thing is, a single pixel in this art here that was done in Deluxe Paint, that's a 16 by 16, that's 16 pixels worth of data going from that low res to this high res stuff presuming that we're going up from that from the low res stuff to 1080p it's like you can't get it perfect the pixels are not going to align perfectly if you're trying to do like a triangular corner or something so you have to just use this as a guide you really can't make it look exactly how you did in the pixel art form so at the first ship here i was pretty much just I was kind of rusty, so I was do keeping things simple for this one at first. You're going to notice a little later, as I'm working on the Zeus, that I decided to ramp things up a little. I decided that I was already I already made the decision to make it so that the separation lines would only be about 2 pixels thick at 1080p, whereas in Deluxe Paint, they basically had to be the equivalent of 4 pixels thick. But I also decided to start doing single pixel thick lines. Now, I know they look pretty thick here on the screen right now, but remember that this has to be shrunk down so that the player sprite is essentially only 60 by 60 pixels. So, those thin little lines are actually only going to be one pixel tall when it comes down to it. At least in terms of the player sprite that you see on screen when you're actually playing the game. When you're selecting ships, you'll actually get a bigger, more detailed sprite. Well, not more detail, it's going to be the same level of detail, but it's going to be bigger. Which means you're going to be able to see the definition in the ship more easily, which means it's important to do those single lines. And then with that in mind, I actually took some of that and applied it to the Asteria to give it a little more definition. Now one particular problem I ended up facing with the Hyperion had to do with <laughs> this little corner right here. This was not aligning well with the grid. So I ultimately had to move this point into a position that was completely not grid synchronized. It, I don't like doing that because I like things to conform to a grid in some degree, but in this case, it really was the solution in order to make that line seem as smooth as possible. When I moved on to the Prometheus, I decided to get a little more interesting. This is when I started using the Boolean functions again. Boolean functions are what allow you to change the shape of a vector based on adding or subtracting volumes to it. So in this case, as you can see right there, what I did was I took a rectangle and I basically subtracted it from that circle that I had there. So that now there's this nice gap in the circle making this sort of line in the middle of it. And I just sort of went all out with the Boolean functions with this particular ship. In many ways, because I was using so many Boolean functions to produce this ship, it kind of ended up having the most organic look, even though it really kind of doesn't look organic. But then I'm okay with that. Like, I mean, having a sort of mix like that, it gives its own unique charm. So even though it looks kind of weird, it still looks like a viable ship. The rail was a little tricky because I was trying to put these little middle sections that were sort of angled off on the sort of side pylons. But as you can see, even though this aligns properly with the grid, it doesn't look right. So what I had to do was I basically had to extend things outwards and then use the Boolean functions to cut them off so that they actually would be aligned properly. Now you don't always have to put your graphics together as unions or stuff. As you can see right here, what I did with the circular front section of these sort of pylons here is I never actually unioned that 
triangle that sort of angled section with the ha- with the half circle up there. I just sort of put them together and they fit together. Like I mean, their lines meet up with each other. There's not actually any reason for me to go the extra step to make them joined, so I didn't. I just left them as two separate pieces. Now at this point I was also considering other alterations to make the Asteria look more interesting, but I never really did come up with a way of making it look better. So I mostly just undid any of the changes you see me do to that thing. The Nemo sign was actually really challenging to figure out, because as I was coming up with the full design here, I realized that the second set of pylons, the smaller set of pylons, between the large ones and the main body, didn't really fit well with the, with what I had come up with. So I ultimately decided not to put them in at all, just leaving the big pylons at the edges, and then just having the sort of you know, the separations with those different sections there. Because remember, these ships will actually be player colorized, so the player can actually choose primary, secondary, and tertiary colors for making the ship look more detailed to how they want. So it's important to have some that co- sort of separation going on. I didn't decide on the co- how the colors would be laid out just yet, but I probably will at a later point in time. Well, I kind of have to. The Hermes was thankfully very simple to put together, in terms of lining up with the design I originally had. Though I did make some minor alterations, just to give it more... just give it more definition in itself, in a sense. Again, it's... uh, I kind of felt bad for the Asteria, because the Asteria was such a simple design now by comparison, but I was starting to come to the conclusion that maybe it was a good idea to have at least one ship that had a sort of simpleness to it. The Demeter was actually really tricky, and this one took a lot of fiddling because I wanted to make sure that the engine parts on the wings actually looked like they were sort of inset into them in a way, because if they were too far out, then they wouldn't have that sort of inset look to them. But if they were too far in, they would actually cut off the wings, and I didn't want that to happen either. And then afterwards, I did a quick export into PaintShop Pro, and this is what they look like. This... These are the four, well, that's four. These are the eight ships that the player will be able to select from in the game. And this, obviously they look larger here, but they're designed in such a way that they should look right when they're shrunk down to how big they'll be at the 1080p resolution. And of course they will appear larger when you're selecting them. So I'm glad they turned out well, especially since it's been a while since I actually used Inkscape to do this kind of work.